Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. If you want to capture your gameplay and own a graphics card from Nvidia, then you probably use Shadowplay or Nvidia Share as it's called now. So while Nvidia Share is a really great free feature, it also has a few limitations and issues, which might cause that you want to use a different solution to capture your gameplay while still taking use of the Nvidia encoder. So 8 months ago I did a video about 3 Nvidia Share alternatives, OBS, Bandicam and Action. In that video I showed you how many frames per second you lose when you capture your gameplay with these applications and I explained how OBS and Bandicam can use a second GPU to reduce the performance hit of these applications. If you want to learn more about that then you can find a link to that video in the description down below. So that was 8 months ago, which is why I thought that it's about time that I take another look at these applications to find out if the developers fixed any of the issues or shortcomings that I found while I was testing them. So let's take a quick look at what these applications offer now. Nvidia Shadowplay or Nvidia Share is free, but it requires that the graphics card supports that feature. It provides an in-game overlay, so you always know if it is recording or if the instant replay feature is active. It can only record two audio tracks and it is not possible to change the audio device for the primary audio track, which is a big downside if you want separate audio tracks for the audio of the game, your microphone and the audio of your voice over IP software like Discord or TeamSpeak. It is not possible to customize the file names of your recordings, but it uses the name of the application, date and time to keep things organized. You cannot offload the encoding to a second GPU and it also does not allow you to store the replay buffer in your RAM instead of constantly writing onto your hard drive. Though you can set up a RAM disk and then change the temp folder to use that RAM disk for the replay buffer. But if you want to do that then you must make sure that your RAM disk is larger than your replay buffer or you will run into massive issues with the instant replay feature. The biggest downside of Nvidia Share is that the recordings use a variable frame rate. This does decrease the performance hit and lowers the file size of the recordings, but it also causes audio video sync issues in many video editing applications and video players. OBS on the other hand is a free open source software, which is primarily used for streaming, but it is also a very powerful capture software. Its biggest downside is that it does not provide an in-game overlay, so unless you have OBS running on a second monitor, there is no way for you to tell if OBS detected your game, if it is currently recording or streaming, or if the replay buffer is on, or if the replay buffer was saved. What OBS does really great is audio, as your recordings can have up to 6 different audio tracks, which is great if you want to put the game audio, discord, your microphone and the in-game VoIP on different audio tracks, which makes editing your gameplay a lot easier. In the description down below you can find a link to a video where I explain in depth how you create such a setup. The file names of your recordings can be customized, but sadly OBS is unable to put the name of the application into the file name. It can offload the encoding to a second graphics card and it stores the replay buffer inside your RAM. Even though storing the replay buffer in the RAM is the best solution, it would still be great if OBS would provide an option to allow users to store that data on an SSD or HDD in case that someone simply doesn't have enough RAM in the system to store the replay buffer there. And OBS uses a constant frame rate for the recordings, which means that you will not run into any audio video sync issues when you edit or just play the recorded video file. Bandicam costs 39 US dollars per PC, it provides an in-game overlay, it only supports two audio tracks, you can customize the file name, it supports the offloading of the video encoding to a second graphics card, but it still does not provide a replay buffer, which is a very big downside if you only want to capture your highlights and not have to go through hours of gameplay to find that one epic moment that you want to use in your video. It also supports VFR and CFR, which you can select here, but you really want to use CFR to record with a constant frame rate to avoid the issues that are caused by a variable frame rate. Action costs a bit less than Bandicam, it also provides an in-game overlay and its recordings can also only have up to two audio tracks. You can record a third audio source as a WAV file, however that does not work when the replay feature is used and it is a pain to sync these files later. So that isn't something that I would want to use when I need more than two audio tracks for my recordings. File names can't be customized, but Action uses the application name, recording date and time for the file name. And since version 3.3.0 you can also offload DVD encoding to a second graphics card, which helps to reduce the performance impact. 
The replay buffer is stored on a local disk, but you can select where you want to store the replay buffer, so you can use a RAM disk to put the replay buffer in your RAM, which makes it faster and prevents that the application is constantly writing onto your SSD or HDD. Sadly, Action only records using a variable frame rate, which can cause audio and video sync issues. Now, how many FPS do you lose when you record your gameplay with the latest version of these applications? To find out, I repeated the same tests again with the Unigine Superposition Benchmark. There are many numbers in this chart, so I'm not going to read out all of them. But if you want to take a closer look, then you can find the link to the results in the description down below. So, with all recording tools disabled and with the benchmark running in exclusive full screen mode, I got a minimum frame rate of 88.46, an average of 116.05, and a maximum frame rate of 152.03. When I tested OBS the last time, I noticed that I lost about 10 FPS on average just by having the application running on my second monitor connected to my primary graphics card. In the latest version of OBS, I am now losing about 5 frames on average when the preview is enabled, which means that I see the captured gameplay inside the OBS window on my second monitor. When I disable the preview in OBS, then this slightly increases my frame rate. When I use a second graphics card to drive that second monitor on which OBS is running, then my frame rate decreases by 3 frames when the preview is active, while when the preview is disabled, my frame rate stays pretty much the same. So the developers did improve the performance impact of OBS when it is not recording. Bandicam and Action still don't have a noticeable impact on the frame rate of the gamer benchmark when these are not recording. But you must keep in mind that unlike OBS, these also do not show you a preview of the gameplay that is running on your primary monitor. Now let's talk about the performance while we are recording gameplay. Here I didn't see any changes. The current version of Shadowplay still reduces the average frame rate by about 3 frames. When OBS uses the primary graphics card for the encoding, then I lose about 9 FPS on average. And with Bandicam as well and Action, the frame rate dropped by about 13 frames on average. Once I offload the encoding to the GTX 1050, OBS, Bandicam and Action achieve about the same FPS as Nvidia's Shadowplay, while providing better image quality. So if you are recording or streaming your gameplay, then using a second graphics card for the encoding can increase your frame rate and help to achieve about the same performance as you get with Nvidia's Shadowplay. Now what if you record gameplay at 4K? In my tests, Shadowplay reduced the frame rate by about 7 FPS, while OBS, Action and Bandicam decreased it by more than 21 frames per second when the video encoding was done by the primary graphics card. Once I offloaded the video encoding to the GTX 1050, the FPS loss was cut in half, so that the minimum frame rate did not drop below 60 anymore. So, in terms of performance, not much changed during the last 8 months, but OBS did decrease its performance impact when not recording and Action added support for offloading the encoding to a second graphics card, which does help its performance. Now let's have a look at my updated list of pros and cons for OBS, Bandicam and Action. OBS is free and open source, which is still great. It uses a constant frame rate to record videos, which helps to avoid audio video sync issues, especially during editing. It offers a replay buffer. You can use a second GPU to do the NVE and C encoding. The encoder settings are highly customizable. Performance is close to Shadowplay when you use a second graphics card. You get better image quality than with Shadowplay. 60fps recordings feel very smooth thanks to recording with CFR. You can have up to 6 audio tracks in your recordings, which is great for editing. I have never had a single corrupted recording and it supports plugins. But tools like RTSS can cause problems for the game capture source. I still have the issue that 9 out of 10 times the game capture source will not detect Overwatch when RTSS is running. I always have to select that application manually to capture it. If you are looking for a Shadowplay alternative and don't have a second monitor to run OBS on, then the biggest downside of OBS is that it does not provide an in-game overlay. This means that when you have just one monitor, then you have no idea if OBS detected the game you are playing, you have no way to tell if the recording is active and you get absolutely no feedback at all when you press that hotkey to save the replay buffer. So if you can't run OBS on a second monitor to keep an eye on, then this might be the only reason for you not to use OBS, as this missing feedback makes it really hard to use OBS to capture your gameplay. 
Sadly, there are also no plugins to fully resolve this issue, at least as far as I'm aware of. Then the replay buffer still does not reset when you save it. This means that when you have 5 minutes of gameplay in your replay buffer and then save it, then you get a video file that is 5 minutes long. When you save the replay buffer again 1 minute later, then OBS stores a video that is 6 minutes long instead of a 1 minute long video. I would really prefer the replay buffer to reset every time I press save, like it does in Shadowplay and Action. Another thing is that OBS only stores the replay buffer inside the RAM, which can be an issue if you don't have that much RAM in your system. An option to store it on your hard disk would be nice, even though the RAM is the best location for the replay buffer as you don't want to constantly write data on your SSD or HDD. And lastly, unlike Shadowplay, Bandicam and Action, OBS cannot use the title of the game for the recorded video file, which makes organizing the videos a bit harder than it has to be. I know that OBS isn't primarily meant as a screen recorder, but since we are talking about a replacement for Shadowplay here, I must mention these ease of use problems. Bandicam can use a second GPU for NVE and C, and when you use a second GPU you get performance that is very close to Shadowplay, with a video quality that is better than what Shadowplay offers. The video recordings are very smooth, but only if you choose to record with a constant frame rate. However, in my tests Bandicam sometimes failed to detect the game, which meant that I had to relaunch it multiple times until I got the overlay and was able to capture it. But the even bigger issue is that when you forget to stop the recording before you close the game or when the game crashes, then this corrupts the recorded video file. Bandicam does come with a tool to fix broken recordings, but it does not work with MP4 files. It also does not have a replay buffer, which is a massive downside if you only want to record your gameplay highlights. And Bandicam only supports two audio tracks, which means that you have less freedom when you edit your recorded footage. Now how about action? Unlike OBS and Bandicam, it never failed to detect the game, it comes with a replay buffer, and unlike Bandicam, it never corrupted a recording when I forgot to stop the recording before I closed the game. Since version 3.3.0, you can also offload the encoding to a second graphics card and you get better image quality than with Shadowplay. However, the encoder options are very limited, as you can only choose between a few different presets, and I'm not sure what a bitrate of 100% is supposed to mean. And then there is the issue that it only supports recording with a variable frame rate. 60fps recordings don't feel as smooth as those from OBS and Bandicam when you use CFR. And it only supports two audio tracks, which limits your options if you are a content producer. So, if you don't need more than two audio tracks, and if the Shadowplay videos don't give you a headache when you edit them, then there is nothing wrong with using Shadowplay or Nvidia Share to capture your gameplay. But if you want the best video quality, the smoothest recordings, three or more audio tracks, a replay buffer and highly customizable encoding options, then OBS is still the best option. You just have to find a way to deal with the issue that it does not have an in-game overlay and that the game capture source sometimes requires that you manually select the process of the game that you want to capture. However, if Action would get the ability to have more than two audio tracks in a recorded video file and to record with a constant frame rate, then I would consider to switch from OBS to Action as it also provides an in-game overlay and it never failed to detect a game in my tests. Bandicam on the other hand is the only application that I would stay away from, as it doesn't provide a replay buffer, it only supports two audio tracks and there is a big risk that you end up with corrupted recordings that you can't use. And that's all for today. If you enjoy my videos then it would be great if you could support me on Patreon, because without the awesome support that I get from my patrons, battle nonsense could simply not exist anymore. You can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you will also find links to my social accounts in case that you want to stay up to date on the videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.